Welcome to LitCast, the podcast covering GCSE literature revision and notes for WJC. These podcasts are designed to be used as an additional revision tool. There's nothing new or groundbreaking here, just revision notes in an on-the-go friendly format. Using these alone won't guarantee you an A-star, but they can help you build your confidence to apply this knowledge to your exam questions and your classwork. With that being said, let's get started. Hello and welcome back to another LitCast. In this episode we're going to be looking at Slim, the most respected man on the ranch in Of Mice and Men, and uh, one of the characters who is particularly interesting to talk about in terms of 1930s America and the novel's context. Slim is the jerkline skinner. This means that he controls a team of mules, which is a very skillful job and obviously one that requires leadership. So just by his job description we already get an indication of what kind of character he is someone who demands respect and deals with it very skillfully and is a skillful worker as well slim is described as royalty he's described as the prince of the ranch he has natural authority and that authority has been gained naturally it's not because he's the son of the boss and because people are scared of him that he has any authority people actually listen to what he says they see him as a figure of uh, natural authority and someone that they, they aspire to. And he's this positive character in quite a negative environment. He's also fit and healthy, which means that he attracts the attention of Curly's wife and he's the only person that she addresses by name. He calls her good looking, which immediately gives us an indication of his views. He's not intimidated by Curly's wife, with her being the wife of Curly, but he gives her the attention she's so desperate for. And in a simple action like that, leads her one step closer to achieving that dream of being loved and having attention. So just by demonstrating a different attitude, Slim is showing us that dreams are possible, but only if people's attitudes change. It also shows that he's not afraid of Curly at all, which is a contrast to everyone else. Slim is there at key moments in the novella. He supports Carlson at the crucial moment before Candy's dog is killed, which isn't cruelty, it's practical, because the dog was old and suffering. When he drowns four of his own dog's puppies, he simply says she couldn't feed that many. So he had to kill someone or else they all would have died. So again, even though it seems like a cruel act on the surface, in actual fact it's uh, another example of him taking authority and responsibility and doing what is best. He twice says Lenny has to be killed at the end. And again, that's a similar kind of um, sense of responsibility and authority. And the puppies kind of foreshadow then that decision making that he demonstrates when uh, Lenny needs to be killed. He organises Curly's trip to the doctor when Lenny breaks his hand and it's Slim who comforts George after he's shot Lenny. He sits next to him then takes him off for a drink. So he's practical and he's wise but he also has a sympathetic side and he understands that even though these decisions need to be made they're still hard decisions to make and they have a human impact. He has a quiet dignity. He doesn't need to assert himself to have authority. And lots of different language choices demonstrate that gravity, prince, royalty. He understands the relationship between George and Lenny, and he helps George at the end and reassures him that he did the right thing. But we know little else about him, which gives him that slightly mysterious quality. So potentially, we could say that he's almost too good to be true, and there may be something that he's hiding. When he first comes into the bunkhouse, he moves with a majesty achieved only by royalty and master craftsmen. So that language, again, gives us that indication of his authority, again, even though he doesn't uh, have authority in the way Curly does. He's so respected and admired on the ranch, however, that even Curly listens to him. When Lenny smashes Curly's hand, Slim intercedes and tells Curly he will not have George and Lenny fired. Slim understands Curly's fear of ridicule and uses that fear to help George and Lenny. He also inspires confidences because he's not judgmental, demonstrating a contrast between the typical views and prejudices of 1930s America. When George first meets Slim, George tells him about Lenny's troubles in weed, and George senses in Slim a person of intelligence and empathy, who will not be mean to Lenny, make fun of him, or take advantage of him. 
Slim is almost the spiritual leader of the men. He seems to be the conscience of the novel and has a strong sense of right and wrong. The men trust his judgement. He's the first character to call Crooks by his name instead of some kind of racial slur and treats him with more respect than the other characters do. He understands the way nature works, that people or animals who are weak will not survive in nature. So he could have stopped Candy's dog being killed, but he chose not to. He could have maybe helped Lenny in a different way, or helped George and Lenny in a different way. And again, he chose not to, because he understands the way that nature works and the way that fate works, perhaps. He's the only one on the ranch who truly appreciates the difficulty of George's position, and he understands the constant oversight George must exercise in watching Lenny and keeping him out of trouble. It is Slim that suggests that George did the right thing and helps George deal with the decision that he made. So he's present at every key moment, and he quite often, if not every time, helps make the assessment to do what is merciful or what is right. So he's that leader in the sense of morality and spirituality. So he does have that sense of uh, mysteriousness to him, and he does have that sense of someone being potentially too good to be true. But maybe that's being cynical. Maybe he just is someone who completely contrasts with the stereotypical views of the time in order to demonstrate that despite the times being harsh, people could still be decent human beings. So what about an essay on Slim? If you had to write an essay on Slim in the exam, what kind of things could you talk about? How could you link him to context? I mean, after all, he's not a typical example of attitudes in the 1930s. So you could talk about the fact that he emphasises racist and sexist prejudices that existed in society simply because he doesn't have them and therefore stands out as a point of contrast. And when we've talked about George and Lenny in the past, we've talked about their friendship standing out because it's unique and because it contrasts with the stereotypical ranch worker life. And it, the same applies here. So in the same way, Slim doesn't embody those prejudices and therefore he makes them stand out as negative aspects of people's personalities. He also stresses the fact that these men were valued for their ability to work well because he gains respect from everyone for being a real Skinner and for being you know, very, very good at his job. Many of his comments and actions emphasise the harsh and violent world of 1930s American ranches, such as dealing with Curly's hand, Curly's wife's death and involvement with the dog. The fact he has to deal with those things demonstrate, you know, those events happened, he's there at the key moments in the book, which again emphasise some of those uh, prejudices and the harsh life of the ranch at the time. But unlike others, he deals with it in a sensitive way. So the way that he deals with it highlights the prejudices and the negative attitudes of other characters. And his comments to George at the start of chapter three suggest that friendship is quite uncommon but he does seem to understand it more than others. So he highlights again the fact that the friendship between George and Lenny is uncommon. He highlights these negative attitudes as being sort of the, the expectation. And Steinbeck presents him as very different to everyone else, potentially, which helps then to suggest how harsh life was for 1930s American ranch workers and how different it could be because the other characters are bitter, lonely, lacking in understanding or thought for others. Slim stands out against these because he's the minority. He does have, in terms of uh, social standing, ultimate authority. However, despite his authority and the words used to describe him and this princely spiritual leadership quality, he is powerless to stop these tragic events and he instead understands that he just needs to deal with them in the most practical and sensitive way rather than trying to stop them. This is the case for the fight, it's the case for the dog and it's the case for Lenny. So these tragic events in the story, um, he can't prevent them from happening, he just uh, instead deals with them in the best way possible. So that's some notes and just a couple of little pointers um, and some extra bits on Slim, uh, just in case, you know, he may come up as an essay question or if you're uh, lacking some revision notes for him. Um, that's all for this episode and hope you tune in for the next one. You've been listening to LitCast, the podcast covering GCSE literature revision and notes for WJEC. This podcast is available to download from castbox.com, so if you're listening on YouTube, the link will be in the description below, where you can download these to listen offline, on your phone and on the go. 
Thank you for listening and good luck with your revision.